Welcome to the Real Turf Techs Podcast for the technician that wants to get real. Follow along as we talk to industry professionals and address hot topics that we all face. Along the way, we'll learn tips and tricks. I'm your host, Trent Manning. Let's have some fun. Welcome to the Real Turf Techs Podcast, episode 122. Today, we're talking to Sam Baldia, equipment manager at TPC San Antonio in San Antonio, Texas. TPC San Antonio is a private 36-hole facility. It has the Oaks Course, where the Valero Texas Open is held, and the Canyon Course has supported championships and Corn Ferry Tour events. Sam has two technicians with him in the shop and a preventive maintenance technician. He has primarily John Deere equipment, like most TPC courses. Let's talk to Sam. Welcome, Sam, to the Real Turf Techs podcast. How are you doing today? I'm good. Doing well, Trent. Appreciate for you having me do this. Oh, yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm excited about it. And yeah, thank you so much for being on. Tell us how you got into the turf industry. Well, it's, it's a pretty funny story. I actually was, I grew up in a mechanical family, but I kind of ventured away in uh, trade school. I was supposed to be a, a brick mason. And uh, I did that for about six months and gave it up. Worked for my uncle a short time. And uh, I was actually working on one of his gravely out front mowers he had. And he set me up to the dealer he deals with. And went up there and ended up talking with the two owners for about an hour. And, you know, they surprised me with a job offer as a apprenticeship getting into the landscape equipment turf industry. And did that for about four years. They ended up closing their business and did some things, you know, on my own. Wasn't happy with things I was doing and got a part-time job. Well... Temporary job, I should say, at uh, Hilltop Golf Club in Alexandria, Virginia. And they found out I could work on things. And that's where it pretty much started back in 2004. And I got my real big break when I was hired on at a uh, country club over in Crofton, Maryland. It's outside of Annapolis, Maryland. And uh, yeah, so that's, I'm here today. That's awesome. Yeah. And I don't, you know, you're not the first one to say, yeah, I'm just going to try this out, this golf course for a little while. Yeah. I'll, I'll find something else. Yeah. And yeah. It's a funny story or similar story. A guy that works on our crew, his name's Philip Boswell. And he grew up in construction. His dad was construction and they you know, run siding, roofing. Very you know what I mean? Framing, you know, anything in construction mm -hmm. going on. And he was in between jobs and he's, I don't, you know, he's in his probably sixties and he's seen the ad for the golf course and he come to the golf course and he's been there, I think 12 years now. Yeah. And, and it, he, he said, yeah, I'll just work here, you know, for a month or two until I can find something better. Yeah. But he's that still there, you know? That was my plan. I mean, I was looking to get back into an equipment dealer and, you know, it just, it just didn't pan out and, and it just opened the doors and, you know, it's had its challenges, but, you know, for the most part, it, it was a, it was a, it was a good run. I enjoyed it. It was something different because at a dealer, at least, you know, you were stuck in a, a bay. You were mm -hmm. stuck doing, you know, the same stuff over and over again. and when it got introduced to me, it was, it opened my eyes. It, it was like, you're doing like a fleet mechanic type deal and you get to get outside and see, you know, the golf course and stuff, see, you know, what the beauty is of a golf course. And then, you know, I've always played golf, you know, it's always been, my dad got me into it. You know, we, we, we played as kids growing up and, and I always played. And it was a good deal, you know, and, and just the job offers kept coming. I got to the sister course of Walden Country Club. That was that first country club I worked at, Crofton Country Club. And I worked there for a little over a year and a half. And I almost gave up, you know, I said, let me try something different. And 
I was lucky enough to get a job interview with the Fairfax County Park Authority and got there, did my interview and come to find out it was for a golf course. And I was like, oh, I guess I'm not getting away from this. And, you know, I spent a good four years with the county, did a little bit of everything, did a lot of repair and mechanical work. Got my spray license for Virginia because everybody at the county has to do everything. It's, it's just, mm -hmm. it just wasn't one man does a certain thing. And, you know, after four years, I kind of got, kind of got tired. You know, I wanted something more challenging and looking, you know, through turf net and, and such and TPC Potomac popped up equipment tech. So I, me and my wife got together, we tweaked on my resume. She did a really good job tweaking on my resume and went and had an interview at TPC Potomac. And man, I was there for like three, four hours for this interview. And I was like, there's no way they're not hiring me. Mm -hmm. You know, they showed me everything. And that's how I got started in the TPC PGA network. They okay. uh, hired me and, you know, I spent... Almost two years at TPC Potomac and was, took a transfer down here to TPC San Antonio for possible promotion. And, you know, it did think good things came about. That's you know, awesome. It, yeah. 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 How do you like it in San Antonio? You know, I'm a native Washingtonian from the Virginia, Maryland, DC area. And it opened my eyes. It was almost like a culture shock. Mm. Uh, because I have family that grew up in the mountains of Virginia and in West Virginia and stuff like that. And, you know, we get down here and it's like, man, I've never seen anything like this. The environment, mm. you know, the people are super friendly, the food, it's been good. I, the only thing I don't like is the heat. Yeah. It kills me. I mean, you know, hundred degree temperatures, it, it can be tough sometimes, but San Antonio has been good to us. Do you have AC in the shop? No. No. Oh, that would be so nice, wouldn't it? Oh, man, I tell you what, it would. It, uh, we got fans that blow hot air around. And, you know, in the mornings, it's real enjoyable because, you know, we're in the foot of the hill country. And even in the summertime, you still get that, you know, early morning, like, chill in the air. And it feels mm. so good. And then when that heat hits... You know, it, it wakes you up. It's like, uh oh, it's going to be a tough day. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I'm pretty sure TPC Sawgrass has AC in their shop. So, they do. You, yeah, you might need to, oh, I've need been, to talk I've been to somebody. Talking, no, I've been, I've been talking to them. But, you know, it, it, we're, we're trying to get some things in place. I got some estimates for automated doors and other things to kind of hopefully one day meet Sawgrass. Robbie, who is our director, was wanting me to get estimates on that stuff. But, you know, it would be cool to have that. It really mm -hmm. would. Yeah, that uh, automatic door they get at uh, Sawgrass and something else, too. I've never seen a door move that fast. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah I haven't like, been there yet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of in between the shop and I guess it's a little bit of equipment storage on the other side. And they got this door. It's lightning fast up and down it's so oh, fast man. and it's i don't it's i don't know some kind of like fabric material i guess or okay you know plastic of some sort but yeah really really cool yeah i heard the the techs and the equipment manager have like i guess a key fob or something on their belts that they can open it up real quick i th i would think that would be cool to have uh, yeah yeah they do they got yeah a little push button that was zoop zips up and they walk through and push it again zips down and and yeah same thing like getting into the shop they have some kind of you know key fob with that to even get into the building so you know okay i mean you know they got the big tournament every year and all that yeah. stuff too so i understand that you don't want just people wandering around walking into your shop yeah you know, safety reasons and all that don't yeah. y'all host some tournaments too yeah the valero texas open actually is going to be going on here in three weeks i think three weeks okay. or two weeks to advance week and i think three weeks to tournament week oh. we're we're at full steam 
me and my guys in the shop, we're kind of right now just doing some help on the golf course driving range area because everybody else is tending to other things and why we're having, it's kind of funny, you're prepping for our tournament and, you know, at least for us, you know, we have a little bit of a downtime before advance week gets here. So we get to get out and help do some things on the golf course that, you know, or get the guys out and they see things and, and we can do something different. But once this week's over, we're going to be full steam in the shop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, we got plenty of other questions, but since we're talking about it, what is your process leading up to the tournament? Well, right now, let's see, two weeks ago, <laughs> Three weeks ago, we already re we ground everything. So leading up to the tournament, after that grind, we're going to be grinding greens every day. They top dress greens every week. So we're grinding greens almost every week. Um, going through the equipment, making sure all the services are done, uh, you know, because I don't want to do anything like that once advanced weeks get here. I just want to grind have everything ready and good to go prepping all the hand tools the, the blow stuff like that because we have a lot of native work that gets done a lot of native mowing we have two vent tracks out front mower 10 foot uh, bush hog that goes out a lot of rough mowing going on right now we're going to start brushing fairways here wednesday we've been brushing greens twice a week I sh should be starting backtracking brush greens here soon. When uh, you say brushing greens, what is it a brush in front of the mower? Yeah, it's that turf science brush Chip Howard okay. out in uh, Scottsdale. He he actually has a nice product, really heavy duty. I like it. Out of all the brushes I've seen, he makes a good product. Yeah, like you know, we hit him twice. They hit Robbie will brush twice a week. And, you know, then we'll do some regular mowing. We're right now, height-wise, we're pretty close to where everything should be. And then when our regional agronomist comes in, you know, the greens will start maybe trickling down a little bit and they'll get the daily rolling going on, start stimping more. And, you know, they shoot for a certain number. Mm -hmm. I got to be a little hush about it, but they, they oh, shoot. Oh, no, I understand. For, they shoot for a certain number, and I think we're getting close. Well, I've heard, you know, I volunteered at several tournaments, and they won't ever say the number, but, you know, everybody in the agronomy team, maybe not everybody, but the superintendent's assistants, they all know the number. So when they stamp a green, they call over the radio, and they say plus one, plus two, minus two, you know, whatever. They have and their target, and then they... You know, I've heard that, of that they, they, we actually, you know, we, we, I guess we're limited on radios. So only certain people have them, hmm. Me, two of my guys and the rest of the assistants and the two volunteer TPC people that come down. So they, they say, um, certain things over the radio and then the other things they hold to the side. And then when they get together right before we're finished or getting close to finish and they'll go over notes and stuff. Well, I remember I was at the players last year and they were entering all of it in on their phone. Yeah. And it was, you know, tracked in their spreadsheet or yeah. whatever, you know, yeah, so that's, updated live. That's pretty cool. Yeah. We do that too. You know, it's, I, I, I like, you know, I go out in the morning, go check all the equipment and, you know, I get nosy when they stimp cause I like fast greens and I, you know, sometimes I joke, you know, like, give me a 15 or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, I like seeing the process because working on equipment all the time, you know, you're getting ready. You're here at tournament. You want to have some fun. You want to see some different things. And you know what? You learn some things watching people. You know, I can't say I can stem, but I sure know the process. Right, right, you know? right. And, and I, I think it's it. pretty cool. Yeah, no, it is cool. Well, and interesting enough i guess hopefully you find it interesting or the listeners do when i was at the players that was my task is i went out with the step team and oh, i was really? just there yeah i was just picking balls up i didn't do any stepping but i, I was just overseeing yeah the, the process but i mean it was fun yeah, yeah we had the we were dropping the ball too 
to the yeah the fire mess and all yeah. that stuff. So that was cool. It was a good yeah. experience. All right, let's go to the second question. All right, what's your least favorite part of the job? Oh, you're gonna love this one. Everything to do with sand. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, I didn't mind aeration too much back on the East Coast, Mid Atlantic, because uh, it was twice a year. But when we got here to South Texas, I mean, we do it four times a, a year in the summer. And, you know, we got a lot of equipment going out, a lot of different things, aerators, verticutters. Um, we're mowing down in heights. It's, it's hot. It's dusty. It can be very challenging. It's, it's nothing. When I first got here, it's nothing like I've ever seen anywhere else. You know, it's the, the weather can really be your enemy at times here in the summer and it, it wears you down. You know, it even plays heck with the equipment, you know, mm -hmm. with the, especially with the mowers going out. Like for instance, we'll go out and mow down fairways. You know, if the grass is dry, radiators get clogged. Air filters are getting clogged. There's a lot of blowing stuff off. And, right. you know, back east, we didn't have any of that. And, you know, if I was back east, I'd probably tell you something different. But right now here in, the, you know, South Texas and doing it four times in the in the summer, it's like, eh, it's not my biggest, biggest thing I like. No, yeah, no, I definitely can understand that. And, I mean, even here in Georgia, we get hot, but, you know, it's pretty humid too. So yeah. we don't, you know, have all the dust in our, the dust is not as bad. Yeah. I mean, luck, luckily enough, we get a good week to take care of everything. So we don't go out and try and kill everything in one day. Mm -hmm. We'll get probably half the greens done one day, half the greens done the other day. Fairways will just keep rolling through the week, tees and approaches. You know, we got time. That's, that's the nice thing where we're at. Course gets closed for a week. Each close, each course gets closed for a week. Right now we're going to be doing aerations one week. I believe it's one week off a week and then back a week on the other course. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, 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 it gets real intense because, you know, like I said, the weather, wearing tines out, you know, readjusting verticutters, you know, just, a lot, just, just so much going on, just so much, mm -hmm. you know, and I got three guys in the shop and we all, you know, hit it hard together. And, you know, we all have, you know, the things that we do and we all chip in with things and, you know, it makes it easy, but you know, it, it does play tough on you. Yeah. It definitely wears on you physically and mentally. Yeah. Or just the stress of, you know, whatever it is, yeah. air fire going down or verticut or going down and, you know, they need it right then or 30 minutes before it broke. And I believe we had things. one, once one year that we got some wetness during aeration and it was nice to have a little cool, coolness in the air, a little dampness, but man, that dragged it on. It was like, I don't oh, want yeah. this again. Just let's just stick with the heat and dry and, and get it done with. Why don't, so we usually air five, uh, well, uh, my one course, July 5th every year okay. and air five greens and it's our thunderstorm season. And we always have a thunderstorm every July 5th. There's a thunderstorm. It seems like, I don't remember a July 5th without a thunderstorm. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's earlier, sometimes it's later. Sometimes it don't last as long, Yeah, but there's always a thunderstorm on July 5th. Yeah, so, we this past year with the heat wave that we had, I mean, we, gosh, I think we were cutting, shutting down for the day around two, three o'clock just because it was so hot. Mm -hmm. And guys on the crew, you know, we, we were able to get it done and it was just tough all together with the heat. It just really was because we have the aquifer where we get our water from and we get restrictions on how much water we can put out. And it was, it was getting kind of, scary there for a minute mm -hmm. you know because you could only do so many things and we had to cut back on you know a verticut here or, or you know verticut there or you know even doing something particular to the green just because we just didn't have the water you know mm -hmm. you, you the the aquifer people they they really watch us close because we're right over the recharge zone 
No, gotcha. Well, what's your favorite tool? I like the par bar. Okay. Shout yeah. out to Miles. Yeah. 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 I, I, I like what Miles makes. You know, it's a really good tool, really good gauge. I think it's probably the best, in my opinion, what's out there right now. The guys in the shop really love it. We went from analog to digital a couple of years ago. The guys really like it. During tournament week, we use the advanced week tournament week. We use the, the half inch bar, the one that only goes up to a half inch mm -hmm. um, with the better quality gauge on it. They really love it. I love it. You know, it's, 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 if you don't have a good gauge or accurate gauge, you're, you're just, you're, you could be running into some trouble. Oh yeah, for sure. And I mean, I've talked about it several times, but I don't think a lot of people are tracking their gauge and, you know, is it consistent? Yeah. Is it accurate? Yeah. Or not? Yeah. Okay. No, we do. I have some milled steel stock that we, you know, test it with the ones that we use for advanced week and tournament week and, and knock on wood. They've been good. Um, you know, like I said, he puts out a good gauge and you got to take care of it. You got, you got to make sure it's in a good safe case, you know, clean the debris and don't drop it. You know, I've seen mm -hmm. working my way through this industry. I've seen a lot of guys just not take care of it, you know? Yeah. And yeah. It, it's very important. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's one of, one of those tools that we can't really do without. No, no. Yeah. Cause when I first started, the super I work with was, you know, old school guy and it was a bar with a screw, you know, and I thought, okay, well, that's, that is, that's what it is. And then I get over to a country club and they're like, okay, this isn't what I remembered, but all right, I'll mm -hmm. roll with it. Yeah. Well, so I volunteer at a tournament in the Caribbean. They broke their, or not that they broke it, but their how to cut age got broke before the tournament. So we were using a bar and screw to set green tie. Mm -hmm. And that's really hard. You know, yeah. if you're trying to measure tent yeah. of an inch you know, on a screw, it makes it tough. Yeah. Especially with, you know, that, that, that bar with a screw, that's a lot of feel. You have to have the right feel. The guy behind you, you know, might have to have that same feel. I mean, it's just, it is. It's very tough. You know, we have one, two, three, four, five. I think we have six gauges, two of them just for greens for advance week and, and tournament week. And then the rest of them are for everything else. We keep them safe. We make sure they're working great during tournament. You know, each of us split up like me and my assistant. We only do the greens. The other two guys will do fairways, approaches and tees. That way we just, you know, we're keeping it equal. And that bar, that gauge stays with whatever we're doing. Like those two are just greens. One's a backup. One's we use. The one is what we use all the time. Mm -hmm. Fairway guys, they got two gauges. One they use the whole time and one's a backup. Same with the T guy. So, you know, it's very yeah. important to have that stuff. Oh, for sure. Do you have any volunteers on the shop during the tournament? Danny McConnell comes down for advance week, helps us grind because we're a Bernhardt facility. Mm. But during tournament week, I've only had a couple through my time here at San Antonio. We get a lot of other, you know, assistants, supers and stuff like that. Mm. It's sometimes it's been great having help in there. And then sometimes, you know, it's, it's been a little challenging. But right now, I think we have a individual who used to be a equipment manager that volunteered and i think he's wanting to come into the shop and do a little bit uh, okay. we'll see how that we'll see how that goes uh we have a you know the guys in the shop they they can they can be a little funny at times they're like don't mess up my my system don't mess up my mojo you know i like it like mm -hmm. this don't mess up nothing sam and i'm like all right yeah, all right yeah. but you know right. let's just let's just see what we can do you know well, I know a lot of times when I've helped out in the shop at tournaments, I just push mowers around. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's always helpful. Yeah. No, we, we, the, the one time I had a guy from, I get these two courses mixed up. It was either TPC River Bend or TPC River Highland or whatever. I, I always get them mixed up, but 
he came down, he was an equipment tech. He was going to be possibly moving up to equipment manager. And he had the idea that he was just going to be doing that, pushing things around, whatever. But mm -hmm. I kind of surprised him by saying, all right, you're going to take care of the T's for us. And, you know, the other guys take care of the fairways and approaches and we'll do the greens ourselves. But, you know, mm -hmm. it, he was kind of shocked because he thought he was just coming there to push something around. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. That's cool. Was it Bob Smith? No, not Bob Smith. No, it was um, um, Bob Martizic. No, it was, gosh, I can't remember his name. Because Bob Martizic is River Howitz. No, then it was River Benz. The one that, what is it, in Ohio, I believe. Okay. It, yeah. Uh, Highlands is in Connecticut. Yeah, that's, yeah, I just met him. Actually, we had a, a video meeting with John Deere, and that was the first time I ever met him. And okay. he seemed like a really good guy we had some same concerns same ideas you know we touch bases and hit each other up i guess he hit me up on uh, linkedin and uh, you know he said feel free to throw some ideas his way stuff like that he, he seemed like a good guy no he is he's, doing some things yeah he's, he's awesome i volunteered up there last year too for the travelers and just push mowers around pretty much. No, I, did, I did a few other things, but I mean, there's a lot. I love volunteering. It's a lot of fun. You get back way more than you put in. But I tell I, you what, well, I hear that from everybody. We get a lot of people from overseas, England, New Zealand, here in the States. And a lot of them, that's what they do. They just do tournament support and they pick a couple throughout the year and do it. And it's amazing that, you know, that, they may be stuck in bunkers. They may be doing divots. They may be doing something like that, but they always seem to go back with some sort of knowledge that what we did and take mm -hmm. it to their facility. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily matter what their task is during the tournament. They're no. talking to everybody else. They're yeah. networking. They're talking to your supers, your assistants and getting ideas about this, that whatever else so it's it's a great experience yeah i'd love the guys from overseas because they come in and it's like their mind is blown at the size of our facility and the stuff we got mm -hmm. they're like oh no we don't have that you know we, we we got you know half the equipment or a quarter of the equipment you got or man your shop is huge you know it just yeah i love it you know because it's cool i see it what we do but I would love to go overseas and do something and see that just because, oh, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's a whole different world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. That'd be awesome. Well, what do you do to relax or find your balance? I really like the outdoors. I love fishing. I love being with my son. He likes getting out and fishing and stuff. He, he's funny. The first time I took him, ever took him, he, I had more fun than I guess he did to see him hook his first fish. and. He got a couple fish and he was like, okay, I'm done. I'm ready to go home. Like, what? what? I mean, everything's getting good, but that's one thing I love to do. I love the outdoors. I used to hunt a lot back when I lived in Virginia and Maryland. I really haven't done that in years. Also got a, my wife really gets on me because she says I'm really good at it. I love take, I love taking pictures and photography. Right. Um, some of the stuff you see on my X or Twitter page, you know, or, or the sunrises and stuff of the course, the fog and everything. And, you know, I, I know some people that really do professional photography and they, they keep telling me, you know, it might be something you want to do. I look at it as you can capture the moment you're seeing and constantly go back to it and re-seeing it and re, you know, feel that moment that you felt when you saw it in person. But I just, I love the outdoors. I just love it. No, that's awesome. And yeah, I think, I don't, I guess when I was out in uh, Phoenix, I don't remember if it was, I think of his name in a minute. I don't know why I just went blank. But the great equipment manager at Desert Mountain. And anyway, I'm talking to him. I'm like, Every equipment manager I think I've met is a redneck. We're all rednecks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just funny, you know, yeah. and not that that's a bad thing or, or no, no. anything like that. But yeah, I mean, most of us do enjoy the outdoors. A lot of us like to fish. Some of us like to hunt. 
Yeah, it's it was just awesome. You know, I did like I said in the beginning. You know, I used I used to play golf a lot. I would play it once, twice a week. My dad, he used to be able to hit the ball real far, and I was pretty equal to him. So he took me to my first long drive competition, and he just wanted to see what I could do. And sure enough, you know, I got hooked on it because I didn't really know that that could be something you could do. I competed in local events and made it twice to regional championships and, you know, pounding the ball. Like my longest drive I ever hit was 364 yards. Wow. You get to regionals where all these other guys are vying for the you know, getting to worlds and you're seeing guys hit balls over 400 yards, you know, up in the top 300 and it blows your mind. I did that for a while and I was really hooked on it. I spent a lot of money on golf clubs. <laughs> um, you know, it's just not drivers you could buy off the shelf. There were a lot of components you put together and, you know, I had four and a half degree drivers, five degree drivers, double X stiff shafts. And I was like, blowing money every year and you know i did that for a while and i was like you know okay i think it's time to to settle back but you know no i i love the outdoors and you're right everybody the, the uh, one year we had the golf show here in san antonio we had a shop tour guys from buses came in and you know i gave a shop tour and it's just so many we we love the outdoors it's just it's not a bad thing like you said it just it is what it is i mean we're we're in a way i guess you could say we're we're i don't know we're just good old boys i guess there you go yeah i like that maybe maybe i should change that because i think redneck could have a negative connotation to it so good old boy maybe maybe that's better what I love about Task Tracker is they're constantly innovating and listening to their users. They've added dozens of updates to make our job easier. One new feature is the ability to upload manuals to the equipment. All you have to do is scan the equipment QR code and you have the manual and all other information at the tip of your fingers. You can even create links to those manuals in the work orders and it goes directly to the page that you need. Make your life a lot easier and check them out at asbtasktracker.com. Let's get back to the episode. Well, tell us something strange you've seen at the golf course. All right. This is the strangest thing I've ever seen is when I got here from the East Coast to here, South Texas, are the hogs. These, yeah. These things are relentless. They are destructive. The weirdest thing, because we trap them at our golf course and they get disposed of. And one time I was up on the driving range early in the morning and I started to chase this one off in my cart. I got a 835 XUV. So, you know, it goes in its Mm forties and I was chasing them a good ways. And, you know, I bumped him in his butt and he stopped and turned and looked at me. And I'm like, why are you not running? You know, because I'm coming from an area where, you know, we don't have hogs and it just, how they will turn and and stand toe to toe with you is, Mm. is amazing. Yeah. That's scary. The worst I've seen it was, uh, it was in winter. It it was, um, well before the Valero and they did so much damage. I think we brought in like an 18 wheeler of sod. I mean, it's. It's just crazy. And the things that they do and how they, you know, they, they, they know the course, they know the cut throughs to get from the North course down to the South course. They know, you know, when we're watering the most, you know, it's just, Hmm. it's crazy. crazy. I've never seen an animal like that before. The biggest one we've taken off the property when we had this trapper that would take them out alive. And when, if he caught big ones, he would take them right to the processing place because he charges for trapping and then he made money off selling them to the, the meat market. Mm-hmm. The biggest one he's ever taken off was 368. Wow. That's huge. That was a, that was a huge hog. We had one, we, it was funny because it was, 
we caught him in a storm. I went out and checked. The trapper called us and said, I, I can see him on my camera, but can you go make sure the traps are? Because he looks like he's big. So I drove out there and this big gray, white, I don't know, just, you know, light colored hog was in it. And it was like the biggest one I've ever saw. So I get back to the shop. The senior assistant calls him. Yeah, it's still there. He gets here. We drive out there and it's gone. It busted out the cage. And it's funny because you know how, like, the story of Moby Dick, the big white whale. Well, we got mm -hmm. this story of the big white gray hog that's been running around and no one's been able to trap. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you have a mentor in the industry? You know, I do. When I first started Naples Lawn and Garden, Buddy Harris and Dave Goodwin, they they did me did me well. They They took care of me, helped me learn stuff, taught me a lot about small engines and, you know, turf equipment and small farm equipment to where, you know, it's not a, don't look down on yourself because you're not a car mechanic or a truck mechanic or something like that. This is something that's, you know, just as important as a vehicle. And, you know, they taught me the right way of doing things and, you know, keeping to your standards and uh, going above and beyond what you would normally would do and then just try and and put out a good product when you repair something mm -hmm. you know i was only with them for about four years and then they closed the business buddy has i believe gone and he, you know he's passed away since then but you know on my facebook page david I'm, I'm still in contact with him he's a service manager up at lepco in pennsylvania of, of landscape equipment and, you know, they started everything for me. If it wasn't for them, I probably wouldn't be where I'm at, you know. Right. When I won Employee of the Year back in 2017, you know, I thank David for everything he did for me because if if he wouldn't have taught me, he saw something in me. If they wouldn't have spent the time with me, you know, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. Oh, yeah, for sure. No, that's awesome, man. It's great to have really good mentors you know no matter what industry you're in and no it's 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 important you know my you know i don't really have an assistant but i call him my assistant alonzo he jokes with me a lot you know i show him tricks and things like that that you know you may not see in a book or whatever and uh he he always jokes with me he goes uh thank you sensei i'm like <laughs> that's funny <laughs> yeah. yeah so you know it feels good to you know, have a mentor, but then it feels good also to pass that on. And, um, a hundred percent, you know, I appreciate those two guys. They, they did a lot for me. No, that's awesome. What would be your dream job? Man, I would definitely love to be in a top 50 course. Okay. You know, yeah. I would, I would love to be a part of an operation like that. You know, I, I'm not picky about, you know, I don't know a lot of the top 50 courses, but Working at TPC Potomac, being next to Congressional and getting to go over there and see things when they were getting ready for the U.S. Open, that was awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, the, they, the local dealer that supplied them the equipment, they brought in loaner stuff and they were unpacking brand new stuff for them to use. And I've never seen that before. And I was like, that is awesome. That's Gosh. cool. At the time, his, the, the equipment manager there was Shahid and, you know, it was, it was awesome, but, you know, opportunity for me, you know, it would be, I would definitely love one day to be able to go back to TPC Potomac and finish everything out with the PJ tour, just because that's where I started, you know, mm -hmm. I'm from that area, but I have like in Myrtle beach, I love the the dunes beach and golf club you know i got a chance to play that one year with my dad and that was awesome he lives in myrtle beach he retired there caledonia you know it's a nice club but just to be a part of a, a top 50 club you know i would even love i would even love being a part of sawgrass to be honest with you oh yeah yeah that'd be cool yeah but they got it going on down there for sure I, it's I know they, a, it is, it's, it's a monster. What technician would you like to work with for a day? 
You got anybody in mind? I do. When I first got into TPC Potomac, Jerry Ashby was the equipment manager at the time. And, you know, I worked with him almost two years and I got promoted to, or got transferred here. During my time here, a couple of years ago, he passed away. Uh, I had cancer really bad. I would really love just to have one more day with him. Oh, just yeah. to work with him. He was a good guy. We had fun. We butt head sometimes, but you know, he, he was fresh into the industry. He came from Ford dealer, really good sound mechanical ability, really new into grinding. So, you know, I was able to do a lot of grinding, you know, he was learning the stuff for himself, but I'd really love to have just one more day with him just yeah. to joke with them, show pictures like, Hey man, look, look what they did to this equipment because you know when i got here and got promoted he would send me at least once a week he's like look what this guy did you know his mm -hmm. cart you know all mangled whatever and we would get to joking and stuff and right. i just i miss that I, I would love to have one more day with him yeah, for sure get ready for tips and tricks let's do some tips and tricks all what, right. what, what do you got for us you know I love the leveling table, the granite table. Oh, um, yeah. Okay. That was something new in our facility two, three years ago, I guess. Okay. And, you know, watching the videos that was put out on it on YouTube, how to use it. You know, I think we always tweak on things that we see. And we get a lot of fairway reels that come back that are really knocked out of alignment. And... You know, with that table, it helps us put it back to square. But, you know, we found ways to speed it up, I guess. What we normally, what we'll do is once we get everything clamped down and it, it's rocking really bad, we'll just get the reel. We'll start loosening up frame, you know, getting it, you know, to let it square up with the bed knife and reel. And I found these machined bars that we use as like a feeler gauge and we're feeling it off the the ends of the reel and once we get it right where it's touching nice and smooth on each side not a lot of drag we'll tighten things down back off the reel get it adjusted set the height and we'll put it back on the the, the stone and you know it, it it comes out most of the time like 98 point 90 98 percent of the time true again you know, where I've seen guys on the video and other guys, they use that dial cage, but I don't know. It could be a South Texas thing with the ground hard. You know, it, the reels get, you know, knocked out of whack a lot down here. And we find that way of using those machine bars as feeler gauges, probably the best thing so far that helps us get them back square. We don't so much have problems with that with the greens mowers. When we do get one that's knocked out of alignment, what we'll do, same process. We'll get the reel touching on the bed knife, undo the bolts on the frame, rollers, stuff like that. And then we'll just lower it and touch the bed knife right onto the stone itself. And then go through the process of, I got these long feeler gauges of touching the, the bed knife. And, you know, once we get it where it's, you know, a nice little drag on each side. We'll start putting things back together, tighten things back up, adjusting everything, cutting paper, height, and then we'll throw it back. I love that thing. Who, who, who implemented that? You said you've only had it a couple of years. Well, our, I guess, VP of agronomy kept saying that we all need to get it, get involved with it because Sawgrass had it. And, you know, I think all TPCs now have it. It's a, I think Sawgrass, from what I heard, I think Danny told me that they use it every day after when machines come in, they'll, they'll mm. throw it up there and check it. But we do it a lot with after a grind or if we got something on the lift, it just doesn't look right. So we'll throw it on there. But it was the VP of agronomy, I believe that implemented it. Yeah. I was just curious. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool though. I mean, I'm glad that, yeah, people are doing that now. And yeah, I mean, I've seen things on Twitter, X, 
and, you know, people clamping down bars across the stone itself and using it like, you know, the old, what was it, Accu gauge that they, that, yeah. they, that they used to have. You know, there's so many different ways to doing it. You know, I, like I teach the guys in the shop, you know, there's a lot of ways out there. There's the buy the book. And then sometimes that we get off the book a little bit because we're able to find new ways of doing it. And I think a lot of people have, are starting to do that. And as long as we're getting to the same common goal of having things square and coming out with the same product, you know, I'm, I'm fine with that and i think you know twitter x is a good place to get information and stuff and even youtube a lot of guys have youtube stuff on there you know it's it's yeah I, I, it's it's just a cool tool and, and having the internet and being able to see what other people do is 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 helpful as well oh yeah for sure i, I mean i think it's awesome and yeah to your point like the old saying goes, there's more than, more than one way to skin a cat. Yeah. I mean, you know, whatever works for you and your operation, you yeah. don't have to do it like the guy on YouTube or down the road or whatever, you know, yeah. it's working Yeah. I mean, I would love, I would love to one day put out a video on X on how we do it. Cause I showed Danny one time when he came with a new guy to Bernhardt. And he was like, wow, I've never seen that done, but we were able to produce what needed to be produced at the end. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, there's so many different ways of doing things. Oh yeah, for sure. Any other tips? Not the biggest one? I would say that's the biggest one. My, my other thing is just get into a good grinding routine. I mean, we're grinding something every week, you know, it's, it's so important to keep those reels sharp and cutting paper nice and crisp because, you know, I've, I've worked around people that are like, you know, spin that reel real fast just to get the, the paper to cut. And I'm like, you know, hold on, hold on. Let's, you know, if he, if you spin it slow and it cuts and it's nice and crisp, that's what we want. Mm -hmm. And just just pay attention to your reels because that's what makes us as technicians for a golf course. You know, it's, it's, it's very important. Yeah. It's definitely our bread and butter because yeah. you know, I mean, anybody, not anybody, but there's a lot of people that can, you know, be a mechanic and work on a lot of different stuff. But that's one thing that kind of sets us apart is we have a good understanding of cutting unit maintenance and setup yeah. and, and all those things. And, you know, one thing that we've been doing past two years now is I gotten in with a Schwepco dealer and I really love their grease. I don't replace barons during the season, roller barons, real barons, just get some good quality grease. It, it's, it's, it's huge. It helps you a lot. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's another good thing. Well, what else do you want to dive into? Oh gosh. Oh, yeah, we covered a lot covered a lot of stuff there. That was good. You know, we as golf course mechanics grow you know, going through this industry and, and going through the years, I think we've got bad names on ourselves for being grumpy. And, you know, we're gonna have times where we do get grumpy, but I think working close and having a good relationship with the agronomy team is key get them to, you know, know that you're on your, their side. We're all the same team. We're all for the same goal because in the end, if one of us fail, we all fail, you know, don't right. get, get rid of that grumpy mechanic personality and not saying that everybody has it. Some, like I said, I get it every once in a while. We all do, but just being, you know, a team player is, is, is huge is key. I'll give you an example. It, it kind of helps us out in the shop a little bit breaks up the monotony we the pf gets mowed twice a week and we do it we help them out by doing it in the morning gets my one it gets my guys out of the shop gets them doing something different and two it kind of lightens up the load of the assistance on sending someone up just to mow the, the driving range tee mm -hmm. you know just something simple like that you know it's just it shows that you know hey man we're we're all part of the same team let's let's help each other out you know, I, I never thought I would be where I'm at 
without, you know, support of others and, you know, you never be afraid to ask questions or try and be the one that you, you think you know what you're doing, but in the end you don't, you're just making yourself look bad. Just, just ask the questions, make a call. I'm, I've made friends here in Texas with a lot in the dealer. I got a great parts guy, road service guy, even some of the directors and stuff. And, you know, if I get stumped with something, I, I will make a call. I have no problem, you know, cause you're going to learn from it, you know, especially just a lot of other guys see a lot more than you. Mm -hmm. So don't, oh, yeah. don't be afraid. Yeah. Especially those guys on the road. I mean, yeah. they see a lot of stuff. They do. You know, a lot more than, and I've had that conversation several times. I mean, when I was doing it, I mean, I, I think one year on the road is equal to five or six years at a golf course. Yeah. Because yeah. you're just, you know, it's a new problem every single day. And I had somebody couldn't figure out or doesn't have the time to figure out and yeah. it's your job to solve that. Yeah. It's like we, I was the worst thing that I think happened to me in a while. We had a 300 gallon sprayer centrifugal pump and it just one day started to leak, you know, and we resealed it and it leaked again resealed it. it was a hydraulic motor it leaked again so i threw a whole new assembly on there and seven parts warranties later it was still leaking hydraulic and it was driving me crazy and i was calling everybody the parts guy was helping me calling deer trying to get some information dtac case was put on it the road service guy came out, tested the, the pressures going back to the motor. They were all within spec. I mean, we were coming up, trying to come up with anything and everything. And I don't know if just a bad batch was made or whatever, but it took a lot of us, you know, to put our heads together and just try and figure things out. And yeah, you're right. Those road guys, they see more than what we do. They see some crazy stuff. You know, mm -hmm. I was, I made friends with this one road guy. He's no longer with the dealer, but I, I still open up to him for help and all because he opened his, his own business, you know, just tech questions and whatever, because we earn that friendship, you know, and he doesn't mind, you know, helping me with something that's stumping me mm -hmm. and just make friends with the road guy, make friends with the parts guy. I got one parts guy that that's all I use. If he's out sick, well, it's not getting ordered today. You know, I'm waiting until <laughs> he's getting back, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's um, cool. It's, it's, it's just important to make that friendship and yeah, they, they see stuff. Yeah, they do. Oh yeah, for sure. You ready to do some rapid fire? Yeah. Let's do it. What's your favorite movie? Jaws. Oh, okay. Yeah. What year did that come out? I think 76. Okay. All right. What would be your last meal? Maryland steamed blue crabs. Yeah, so good. Yes. Yeah. So good. What are you most proud of besides your family? You know, I'm I'm proud of how, you know, things turned out for me. I'm proud of having, you know, a cheerleader and my wife to cheer me on and, and people trust me with things because that does make you proud. It's not a cockiness. It's it's, you know, hey, I earn that person's trust to trust me with everything that I am responsible for at work. So, mm -hmm. yeah. No, that's, yeah. And that's awesome. And that's a huge, you know, I don't know the word, but you definitely should be proud of that. Right. Because yeah. it's, it's one thing to work with somebody. It's another thing to trust somebody you work with. Yeah. I mean, I, I yeah. count on one hand, how many people, you know, my shop, I trust. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's, 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 there's, a, I saw a meme, it, teamwork is not when you work well with each other, teamwork is when you trust each other. Yeah, and, that's you know, good. Mm -hmm. And I trust, I got a new guy in the shop, so, you know, he's still feeling him out, seeing what he can do, because he, you know, he's green to the industry, but I got two other guys that I truly trust. If I'm mm -hmm. not there, I know things are going to be all right. Yeah, yeah, no, that's awesome. And does a lot about the way you mentor them and it says a lot about them too. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. 
Well, tell the listeners how they can get a hold of you. I have a Twitter page. Just hit me up on my name, Sam Baldia, LinkedIn account. And, you know, I, I time to time put things up there. I do surf it at least once a day for new things, you know, see what's going on. You know, I've been toying with even starting up a YouTube channel and doing some things, how we do things with equipment wise. But yeah, just hit me up on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, or LinkedIn. Awesome. No, that's so good. And definitely do the YouTube thing. And anybody yeah. that's listening, do the YouTube thing. Yeah. Or make some videos and put it on X or, I mean, whatever it is. Yeah. I think the more information we can get out there like that, yeah. I mean, the better. And on I plug my own website, but I've linked all the youtube channels that i know of yeah so if you know of another really good youtube channel for our industry send me an email let me know i'll be happy to put it on there because i think that'd be a great uh, resource for everyone i tell you i got into x two or three years ago and it just blew my mind how much information is out there and it blew my mind how you can ask a question and how many people would be responding. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a, we're a niche industry, but you know what? We're a tight industry. I see a lot oh, of yeah. people helping each other. Oh, for sure. And I think, you know, I've said that plenty too, but that's my favorite part about this industry is, and especially on the mechanics, we'll help anybody out. I don't care who yeah. it is. Yeah. I don't care who you are or where you're at. You call me and I'll do everything I can to help you. Yeah. And I think everybody else in the industry is that way too. Yeah. And no, it is. That's what makes I, it so great. I remember the the dealer gave my information out to this one guy not too far from Marlboro Falls. He was having some trouble with some bed knives and stuff like that. And we, we run nothing but JRM stuff, tines and bed knives. And he was so appreciative of me giving him information on jrm and what we do and you know i didn't give out you know every little tidbit but you know i helped him with everything that you know we do and you know from last i heard he was he uh made the move over to the the greens bed knives at least and you know he was doing well he he was getting what he needed out of him just from me helping him giving him my point of view on stuff that's awesome so so good yeah well Thank you so much, Sam. Thank you so much for listening to the Real Turf Techs podcast. I hope you learned something today. Don't forget to subscribe. If you have any topics you would like to discuss or you'd like to be a guest, find us on Twitter at Real Turf Techs. See you bye.